Hey guys. In this video, we will create the game over screen. Generally every game has a game over screen, but we still don't have a game over screen for this game. So, we will create that now. We will need some images to create the game over screen. So let's start off by creating a folder called UI images, because we will import some UI images. In the first video, we've imported the UI images as well. But, that's not a good way to organize a project assets. So I have deleted those UI images already. You don't need to delete them, you can follow this video without organizing the UI images. But, as I have already deleted the UI images, so I am going to import the UI pictures inside the UI folder. Now, we will create a panel called Game Over Panel. This Game Over Panel will appear when the game is over. We can see the Game Over Panel has automatically been created inside the existing canvas. Because only one canvas is enough for a scene most of the time. Now, we will create some text and buttons to organize the game over panel inside the game over panel game object. First, we will set a picture as the background of the game over panel. So, we will drag and drop the canvas image onto the source image option. We can make the game over panel smaller. So, we have to change the scale to 0.8 for the X and 0.9 for the Y. We can see the image is not clearly visible. In order to fix that, we will click the color option and then we can see an option called A. A means alpha. Alpha is the opacity of the game object which makes the object visible or invisible. So, if we increase the value of the A option, we can see the object is fully visible now. So, now we can change the color. I think, this color looks good. Now, we will add a text called Game Over Text. We will first change the text to Game Over. Now, we will change the alignment to Middle for Horizontal and also for the Vertical. So, the text will show at the middle of the text box. Now, we will make the text box bigger like this. Then we've to change the font size to 144, and the font style should be bold. I think, we should change the font. So first I am going to import some fonts. Now, we will place the revamped font for the game over text. We cannot see the game over text in the scene view, probably we have to make the text box bigger. Ok now we can see the text. At last we will change the color. Now, we can see the game over text looks fine. Now, we will add a text underneath the game over text which will show the final score. 
so, I am going to create the text and call it score text. I am going to write a score, let's say 25. Now, we have to place the text right in place and also make the text box bigger. Then we will change the font style, font size, alignment, and the color as well. We will make the color green. Now, for the font we will set mom cake bold. Now, it looks pretty good. So, we can go ahead and duplicate this text, and rename it to high score text. We will show the high score through this text. We can place it under the score text. We don't need much change for the high score text. Here we can just change the text to high score. The font size should be a little smaller than the score text. And then I will change the color as well. Ok, now we will create a button called replay button. This button has a text object which shows the text of the button. First we will add a green image to the button. We can make the button bigger and place it at the bottom right side as you can see. We can see the picture doesn't fit with the button. Because the button image is a square size picture and actual button is located at the middle of the picture. As the top and bottom side of the image is empty, so we have to crop the picture to get the actual button. To do that, I am going to click on the picture from the project window. Inside the inspector, we can see an option called sprite mode. We will select multiple for this option, then we will hit apply. Now, open up the sprite editor. Here we can see the full button image. Unity has an option called slice which we can use to automatically detect the button object from the whole image. So we will click slice button, and select slice again. Now. Click apply from here, then we can close the sprite editor window. Now, we have to attach the picture to the button again. So as you can see, now the image fits perfectly. We will then edit the button size. We will first change the text and font size. Then we will change the font to Bomber Escort. Now, we will change the text color to dark green. Now, we need another button for the main menu. Because when the game is over, there should be a button for the user to go to the main menu. I am going to place two buttons alongside with some space, as you can see. We have to change the button text to main menu. Now, we will change the background picture of the button. We can see the yellow button image is also same as the green button image. 
so we have to fix this like the previous one. Now, we will change the button text color to dark yellow like this. So, this is our game over panel. You can of course add more items to the game over panel. Now, I want this game over panel to be appeared after 2 seconds when the game is over, also the game over panel will appear with a fade animation. So, we need to set up the fade animation first. Then we will make the game over panel show when the game is over. So, in order to add fade animation, we have to add a component called canvas group. I am going to select the game over panel. Now, we will add the canvas group component. We need this component just for the alpha option. So, now we will make the fade animation. I am going to open the animation window. Make sure the game over panel is selected. Now, we will create an animation. We should definitely create it inside the anim folder. We can name it game over anim. So, now we will add keyframes for the animation. First we have to click on the record button. Now, we will make the alpha value 0. We can see a keyframe has been generated automatically, as we made a change to the object. Then we will click on the 30 number frame, and make the alpha value 1. This will make the game over panel fully visible within half second. The alpha will increase from 0 to 1 gradually within half second. However, now we have to click the record button to stop the recording. Now we will open the anim folder and click on the game over anim to uncheck the loop time, as we don't need the loop for this animation. So, our animation is completed. We can play the animation to check if it is working correctly. We can see it is looping. But that's not our problem. Unity shows us the animation again and again by making it loop. If we play the game, we will see everything is fine. You can edit the animation at any time if you want. But how could you access the animation? Just click the game over panel, then the animation will be opened automatically in the animation window. In the past, we have created some animation for the player which you can access just by selecting the player game object from the hierarchy. However, now we will get into the coding part. Because we have to make the animation show when the game is over. By default the game over panel should be disabled. If we just uncheck this box, it means the game object is disabled. So, we will enable it when the game is over. We will open the player controller script. Here we are going to need a variable for the game over panel. We will get access to our game over panel through this variable. So now, inside the game over function, we will first create a timer, as we want the game over panel to be visible after 2 seconds when the game is over. We can use I enumerator function to make a timer. So, I am going to create one called show game over panel. Now, what we need to do is to create a timer of 2 seconds. After the timer, 
we will make the game over panel active. So, we have to write game over panel dot set active, true. This will show the game over panel. We want something more to happen along with enabling the game over panel. When the game over panel will show, we want the score text to be disappeared immediately. And the game over panel has a text to show the final score and another text to show the high score, also there are two buttons. We have to make all of them functional. I am going to create some variables. First one is game object type variable, we can call score text. This text is an UI object, but we are accessing this as a game object, so that we can activate or deactivate it easily. So, now we will deactivate the score text. Now, we will create text type variables called final score text and high score text for our game over panel. First we have to import the UI. So I am going to write using Unity Engine.UI. Now, we can create the variables. So, inside the show game over panel function, we will set the final score to the final score text. First, we have to access the score variable from the score system script. I am going to open the Unity to see which game object contains the score system script. We can see the score system game object is currently attached to the score detector game object. So, I am going to find the score detector game object. Then get the score system script. Now, we can get the score variable. Before this line, we can write final score text dot text as we want to show the score through the text. Now, before the score we can add score and colon. And make sure to complete the line with a semicolon. In the same way, we will set the high score to the high score text. We have to get the high score from the player prefs. So, I am going to get the high score. Remember, the key was high score, as you can see. We still have two buttons inside the game over panel that are not functional yet, we will make them functional in the next video probably. However, we have to call the I enumerator function from the game over function. This function should be called using coroutine. At last, save the script, and go back to the Unity. Here we have to select the player and attach some game objects to these variables. I am going to drag and drop the game over panel, then the main score text, and then the score text and the high score text from the game over panel. Now, we can play the game to see if it's working. Yes, 
it's just perfect. The fade animation also works correctly, so this is it for this video and I will see you in the next video.